there's another loss. Now I know me losing is my controller's fault. Problem is, I already went through all my controllers. If only there is a way to buy new controllers these days without having to pay over a hundred dollars. Well, I guess we can only wish. Oh, how convenient. It's new controller day. Well, today is the day every GameCube controller enthusiast has been looking forward to. Ever since Nintendo cut production of all of their Smash 4 controllers, the price of new controllers has just skyrocketed. If you've been in the market for a used controller in the past year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But today, Nintendo releases their new Smash Ultimate themed controllers. All things considered, they should be very similar to Smash 4 controllers. Now I gotta say I'm super excited. No more going through eBay auctions, used controller lots. As long as these controllers are good, which, based on people I spoke to who actually got to play demos of Smash Ultimate with these controllers, they should be almost identical to Smash 4 controllers. Now I'm going to check all the local targets, best buys in my area. Hopefully they haven't all been scooped up by other Smash players. Two outcomes I can see where they wouldn't have controllers is either one, a bunch of sweaty Smash players came in and just picked them all up, or two, they didn't properly stock so they don't have them all out, but we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, first up, Target. Fingers crossed. Nope, nothing. So the first stop to Target was just plain unlucky. Not only did they not have the controller, but they didn't even have a space on the shelf for the controller. So most likely they just didn't even stock it. Luckily though, there's also a GameStop in the shopping mall, so I'm gonna give them a look next. Okay, GameStop is stop number two. Look what I found. All right, success. Just like the previous Smash 4 controllers, they cost 30 bucks. Got it on the second stop, easy. I think, at least for the time being, these should be pretty easy to find, just because at the moment before Ultimate comes out, the only people I can think of that would want to buy a GameCube controller are competitive Smash players. So if you want to go out and pick one up yourself, you probably shouldn't have too much trouble as long as they're stocked. All right guys, so we're back at home, ready to unbox this. Real quick, I want to apologize for the different kind of setup I have. I'm not actually at home, so I don't have access to my equipment. So we're kind of working with what we got. All right, here it is. Now, if you ever opened up a Smash 4 controller, the packaging seems like it's likely going to contain roughly the same things that that one did. Really quickly, I'll show you all the sides of it. Now, just like you'll find on the box for the Pro Switch controller, you'll see that it doesn't quite open up the cleanest. I don't know why they do this. They just put some really strong adhesive here that rips apart and ruins the top part of the box. Yep, I can already tell this blue plastic wrapping they have around it. That's the same wrapping they had on the Smash 4 controllers. Now, removing the cardboard, we get to the controller that we've been long waiting for. Okay, so no surprise is too big here. It basically feels like a Smash 4 controller. Everything does feel a little more stiff. Now it's been a long time since I've actually handled a brand new Smash 4 controller. So it could be identical to that. The length of the cable seems like it's gonna be the same long type. If I had to place a bet, I'd say the US will get the black version while the Japan will get the white version, which is the way that they handled the Smash 4 controllers. I'll show you guys a close up of the Smash logo right there. If you're wondering, the texture of the shell is also the same as the Smash 4 controllers. Having more of a grip feeling compared to the original generation of GameCube controllers. Really, there's nothing else too notable about this. It basically seems like they just reprinted the Smash 4 controllers with the new logo. I'm gonna take a little pause here to play a couple test games with it, see if there's anything I can notice right off the bat, besides it being pretty stiff out of the box.
Here I'll show off the values of this specific controller at the southwest and southeast gates. Here's the southwest, and here's the southeast. From what I've been able to test, this controller is able to shield drop very consistently on the left side, however it is not able to shield drop on the right side. Pivoting seems to be pretty easy with this controller, um, however that's something that's pretty controller dependent. So the consistency of these controllers performances in these areas are probably going to vary just like they have with previous generations. Alright, so so far it's shaping up to look like this controller is going to be an exact copy of the Smash 4 controller, meaning we pretty much know what to expect. Maybe people will have some problems with the triggers as they did with the Smash 4 controllers. Like I said, everything feels super stiff. Everything is brand new, which yes, you need to break it in like any other new controller or piece of equipment, but it is super nice also having completely unworn control and C-sticks for once. Here you can get a nice close-up of it. Look at that. But now we're going to open it up and see if the insides of it are the exact same as before. Also to see if we can add things like trigger braces or trigger plugs into the controller. As always, to open it, you'll need your tri-wing. Also, a fair bit of warning to anybody who's new to opening up a GameCube controller, it probably voids any warranty that you're going to have. I only say this because when I bought this at GameStop, the guy asked me if I wanted a warranty. Not that they'll necessarily know that you opened it up, but if you screw something up, they might be able to tell. Also, if you're looking for me to go into more detail about opening up a controller, I do have a separate video on just doing that. Today, I'm more just going to dissect the controller to see and compare what the insides of it look like compared to past controllers. So if you actually want to learn how to open one up, then go check out the previous video. All right, opening up the back shell. Now it is black on black, so it's really hard to see. But as kind of expected, the triggers look like they're going to be the same. We'll open one up here. By the way, the same screwdrivers work to open them up because everything seems to be the same here. So I hope you can see that, but that's the screwdriver I'm using. All right, so taking this apart, you have the same little plate piece for the trigger. Taking apart the trigger, all the pieces are the same. You have the longer kind of spring here. And because all the parts are the same, that does mean you can use things like trigger plugs in them. Also, just like Smash 4 controllers, they have this little cutout on the trigger for a trigger brace to be inserted. So if you happen to have a spare, this is definitely something you can do. It's actually really funny that they don't include this piece anymore, but they still mold pieces with the cutouts for it. Rumble and everything looks to be the exact same. Got the little sliders for the triggers, Z button, everything is the same. Whoa. Huh. If you can kind of see here, there's a little bit of maybe some kind of adhesive that they used on the board that seem to have come off onto the button pad. Now the button pad is the tall button pad. The buttons and everything are all the same as they've ever been on the old Smash 4 controllers. The uh, C sticks and the control sticks have the same cutout. You can see right here. And here you can see the control stick box that comes on this. Yeah, really everything seems to be basically identical. Which isn't too surprising. As far as build quality goes, it's Nintendo, so it's good as it's ever been. All the parts are going to be compatible with older generations of GameCube controllers. So if you want a shell swap, you want a part swap, you want to do things like having two C-sticks, that'll all be possible. So that's basically all we have. No big surprises here. However, still really exciting because now if you want to go out and buy a new controller, you absolutely can for a reasonable price. So rest in peace, all of the Smash 4 controller scalpers who held out until now. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry for the long hiatus. School and everything is like it's always been. I should be back to making more consistent content with my actual equipment, so I won't have this makeshift kind of setup very shortly, so stay tuned for that. So as always, be sure to like this video if you found it useful. Subscribe if you want to see more. This has been Zenith. I'm going to go enjoy my new controller, and I'll see you guys next time.